Hello everybody, welcome to my second installment of our game review show. And today we have Kaspar and Baguette, and they have both annotated the game, so it's kind of interesting. If you are new to this series, it's very simple. I am reviewing games that people have submitted to our Dojo Patreon page. You can find the link in the description below. And the only requirement is that you uh, play a longer game and have some kind of substantial thoughts about the game in the annotations. And today's game is interesting, which you can see the annotations here, uh, because we have annotations from two players. And this game was played in our dojo tournament, and it's a very lovely thing. You can find uh, that tournament on our Discord, and there's a link to our Discord uh, in the description below as well. Okay. Very interesting game, and I'm hoping that I can give some insight into the plans here. So, um, very old school position. We've been seeing this forever. And right away, let's say white has a, a little nuanced choice here. And normally I wouldn't spend too much time on it, but it'll affect maybe some advice for the players later on. So white can play queen c2 or e3 here. And the reason why you might play queen c2 is if you're afraid of bishop f5. Now, to my estimation, there's really nothing to be afraid of with bishop f5 because this ending, which I think is forced if they play bishop f5, seems to my mind very pleasant to white. Okay. Um, and so... I think it's almost like a traditional thing then that people then play queen c2 because then they've seen so many games that have started queen c2 that they're like, well, I need to play queen c2. But in fact, as uh, Kaspar notes, bishop d3 here is totally acceptable. And for me, it just seems better not to commit the queen to c2 yet. We might find that maybe d2 might be a better square for her later. Okay, so queen c2, here you can see their notes, of course. Castles, uh, I think castling is fine. It's in fact, you know, a very ancient move. And here, um, h6 was played. I don't, I don't think it's terrible, but it is a little controversial that we want to talk about. Knight bd7 is the old school move that's Thousands, thousands of games. Um, H6 is controversial for two reasons. One, maybe some kind of G4, G5 later. But also, if the knight shows up on E5, then the move F6 will be harder to... You'll at least have to worry about knight G6. So then you have to ask yourself, what is the upside then of playing... Uh, h6, maybe nothing. So I think the old school people always played knight d7, rook e8, knight e4. That's the old school tried and true. Okay, now let's look h6, rook e8, and now knight f3. And um, somebody writes, I'm assuming it's Kasper or Kaspar, that knight g e2. Uh, is more flexible, and I really want to echo that. Um, knight g e2, I want to talk about it a little bit because it'll help explain what, explain what the plans are in the position. We're going to see in this game that white plays the minority attack. And I'm very opposed to this plan, and I'm going to talk about it more why, why I'm opposed to it later. The Plans that I think are better are plans that involve the f-pawn in some way. You have an extra pawn on that side of the board white, and you should put it to use. One way to put the pawn to use is to play f3. Now, of course, you don't have to do it immediately, but that's what knight ge2 does for you. It allows for you to later play f3. And in our first installment of the game review, there's a mildly similar position with similar ideas where the knight is dominated on f6, and then we might play e4 someday. 
And I think there's a very beautiful and simple way to learn those positions, and that's just to look at the Kasparov games against the Queen's Gambit declined from the 1980s. Beautiful games. Chess and education. You don't need to learn any theory. You just need to get a sense of those games. Okay. So that I like knight g2, and that shows us plan number one for how to play this position as white. And I think it's important that white have all three plans as part of, let's say, his vocabulary of this position. So f3 is one. And we're going to see minority attack. I'm going to rank as number three. Let's, if I'm going to rank them, if I'm allowed to rank them, I like f3 best. f4, we'll see this plan with f4 in a second. And then also b4, the minority attack. Okay, so how would f4 come about? Well, let's talk about it. Knight f3. Black plays knight e4. There wasn't any rush to play knight e4. Knight bd7 would have been a little bit more circumspect. And now, um, snip, snop, castles. And there's some analysis with bishop e4, but let's leave it here for a second and say that um, the plan for white to get an f4 is at some point to play knight e5, and then if challenged, to play f4. Uh, this is often referred to as the Marshall uh, attack, named after the American player who played a number of games with that setup. And so the point that I really want to stress is, is that Frederico the F-pawn needs to play, wants to play, a role in the game. It's a little bit, it's obviously a little harder to do this, and it's going to cost some time for white, and there's some, uh, the, the structure is a little bit more, uh, vulnerable when we do it like this. But let's look castles. And now a move I'm not thrilled with here, bishop f5. But I think when looking at black's move, moves that this was already his intention, Kaspar's intention when he played knight e4, to play bishop f5 later. Um, that's why, right, you, maybe you wouldn't play knight d7 first. Now the reason why bishop f5 is funky to me is because that the bishop on f5 is vulnerable. So anytime this guy moves, then bishop f5 can happen, right? Okay, now, um, I think that in this position, I really don't like a3, and in general, I really don't like it. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it. Uh, more conventional ways, to, well, well, more, I shouldn't call them conventional because a3 is the height of conventionality, honestly. But uh, other ways to play would be rook e1, g3, knight h4, and maybe knight e5. All with intentions of doing something like f3. Um, okay, now why don't I like the a3 move? So I want to stress that a3 is the most common plan you'll find, especially among lower-rated players. And I did it myself when I was a kid, partly because I didn't have a coach to tell me otherwise. And the reason uh, people like are drawn to A3 before is because they think that pawns are people. And I did a video about this recently that you can watch above. And this is an example of my own chess experience and so many others where if you think pawns are people, you're going to be drawn to this minority attack idea. So to recap the idea of pawns aren't people, um, in a position like this, players can often not know what to do in terms of peace play, and so they focus on pawns, whether they're pawn weaknesses or uh, just trying to win pawns. And those plans don't address the heart of the position. So uh, I recently talked to um, my own coach, and I've really been enjoying doing game analysis and um, seeing his response to a variety of positions. We looked at a Carlsbad position and he said, he said it slightly different than me, but basically the same. And he, he was the one who put it into my mind that right there's an order of things and the B4 is always the worst. Um, though people who've watched my own game review shows going back, you can find those 
uh, all over the internet will know that I hate the minority attack precisely for the same reasons that we're talking about now. So let's talk about it. What is the aim of the minority attack? That after investing loads of time, you will take this guy and if he recaptures, you're going to claim that's a weak pawn. Okay. Um, in the meantime, you're not going to do anything with your F pawn, right? And what's going to happen is it's going to become hard not to take on e4, first of all. And if he gets a pawn on e4, what he will have is essentially a French... Uh, you, will have, you as white will have a French structure, and imagine just the colors reversed with the pawn on e4, French structure, and what is he going to do? He's going to come after your king. So in the video that I mentioned about pawns aren't people, um, I, I, I said that I got murdered by stronger players again and again for thinking that pawns were people, and this certainly happened in this kind of position. I was always getting murdered. I was going off on this adventure on the queen side, and meanwhile, I was getting slayed. Yeah, major problem. One simple way to think about this minority attack is imagine black is going to try to uh, generate some initiative on the king's side if you don't use your f pawn right? And you are then going to invest one, two moves at the least. We're going to see in this position, white starts off with a3. So that's already, let's count them, one, two, three. So that's three tempi invested in creating a pawn weakness. And the, the hilario there, the joke, is that in general, you could say that three tempi are worth a pawn. Not a pawn weakness. <laughs> They're worth a pawn, buddy. Okay, so that's why I think white deserves to get mated almost every time that he goes for this minority attack idea. And I think maybe should have gotten mated here too. So here we go. Knight d7, b4, and then first mistake, knight c3. Now one thing that um, about this game that I, I feel is that... Um, I don't feel, I think Casper got in trouble because he didn't know his own strength. He didn't know that, in fact, White has undertaken a very uh, trapeze act like a stunt by doing this A3, B4 stuff. And granted, it's a little bit hard to know what to do. For example, we and we got to note that this bishop is loose, loose as a goose, because Anytime this knight moves, the bishop should get taken. So that introduces if knight f6, then we have to worry about knight e5, and then Frederico the f-pawn might, might roll. Now, the good news for us and for Casper is that white didn't take on f5. If he had, I think he just has a very nice position. Uh, it's not over or anything, but he's a very nice position. And I say good news for us because what happens now is now we get um, this pawn structure that I really, really want to do is I want to convince Casper of his own virility, if you will, that he has a very dangerous position here. Not that he's winning or anything. He's already lost some time, obviously, uh, with the whole bishop f5 and bishop e4, but just that he has a dangerous position and that white really needs to worry here. Okay, so um, knight d2, Queen g5, and he writes, I overestimated my kingside play. Oh, no, I love this move. I love this move, queen g5. Think of it as a French structure, right? Uh, because the pawn's going to land on e4. And what do you want to do on a, on a French structure? Well, your side of the board is the king's side, and it's time to bring the lady around. It's time to play for mate. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Casper. It's time to man up, buddy. It's time to man up. Okay. White could do several things. He snips and plays bishop c4. And now you say knight f6 question mark. I disagree. We are in a French structure and you need to overprotect the e4 pawn. Um, if knight f8, then I think white should say to himself, hey, this is a French, let's play f3. And maybe in the game we're going to see maybe he should play f3 too. In the French structure, a lot of times what you're going to the main reason to play f3 
is to give yourself some lateral protection uh, to your king. Uh, you could start with f4 in a lot of these positions too. And um, the point here being our f7 square is kind of tender, and I like white in this position. So I think knight f6 was good. And if I was white, I definitely would be thinking about the moves, the move f4 here. So that if takes, I can capture with the rook. And uh, as long as no, nothing terrible happens to me, I'm going to have, you know, counterplay on the f file. Okay, so queen b3, and then we have a choice between rook e7 and knight d5. Uh, I vacillated myself between the two moves, and I'm just going to go ahead and say they're, they're both interesting. Um, knight d5 is in a lot of ways the manly move because it's going to go all in with the idea of rook e6 and rook g6. Okay, so let's do it. Knight d5, b5. Now, somebody here, maybe it was Casper, put in b5, white has a clear advantage. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, buddy. I don't know. Uh, to me, this is very scary for white. Rook e6, and... Uh, white plays rook fc1. By the way, in all of these uh, analyses, I, I never use the computer, and precisely a position like this, like maybe white, uh, the computer says white's winning, maybe. But I want to stress from my own perspective that um, it's, it's a scary business here. <laughs> it is a very scary business, uh, and I'm not sure. If I was white, I definitely would wouldn't be sure. If I was white, I would have definitely played f3 earlier, just to avoid this nonsense. So, Casper, if you're listening, buddy, let's go down this variation that you give, and you say snip, snop, queen b7. This is what you think white should have played. Rook f8, queen a7, rook g6, g3, and you write, no one believes in black's attack. Well, excuse me, Casper. I kind of believe in your attack here. Let's play one move, h5, and ask ourselves, do, what's, what's going on? What's going on? Look at our force count over there. Look at h4 is coming. And we've got pressure on e3. Nimzovich says, in the French structure, we really want to be looking at this square as if the lust to expand is going to this square. And it's what is it doing? It's preventing the key defensive move, f3 or f4. So when you look at the force count, I don't understand. I don't understand. And at the very least, you know, after, especially after h4, there's going to be uh, repetition ideas of 93. But why better hope for just repetition, buddy, because this is going to get gnarly here. I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be white. No, sir. H4 is coming, and I'm frightened. There's a, and once H4 happens, there's just a variety of ideas for black to mate. Uh, there's, you know, obviously, the big one, I guess, is HG, HG, 93, and then there's also HG, HG, Rook, H6, Queen, H5. So, Casper, I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's look at the game. Rook fc1. And in general, I would say, once you get this position, you're all in. You're all in. You're playing for mate. You've got an engine on the king's side, and he's got an engine to win your pawn. All right. Bishop f1. Good. Rook c8. I don't like it. So um, what you're doing is you're being passive with this move. Um, now, did we have... Other things. I'm assuming. Is it scary for everybody involved? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And the advantage of his rook fc1, of course, is he is rightfully afraid. The baguette is afraid. And puts his... <laughs> puts his lunch meat on bishop f1. I don't know. That just came to my head. Okay, so he plays bishop f1. He, you know, he has hopes of surviving, even though his force count is so terrible. Okay, so here, is there another way for you to play actively? 
That's our question. And here's where we need to be kind of clever. The problem, of course, is he just wants to nail us here with this stuff. And, you know, when I was a kid, I did win a lot of games with the minority attack just because black didn't, you know, realize that they had a problem. And so now, for example, it's not just this thing that's worrying black. It's maybe a rook c5 at some point. Um, this one, I am not 100% on exactly what's going to happen here. For example, something like rook f8, snip, snop, queen b7, knight e3. We got to go. We got to do it. And I don't know what's happening. No idea. I just know it's very frightening for everybody involved. You know, everybody involved. Yeah, and this is totally typical of the kinds of things that can happen. And all these attacks, there'll be mind-bending complications, you know. If that's just the nature. If you want to play this opening, this is what you're looking for. This is the kind of thing, when they don't use their F-bond, this, the, this is the kind of thing that we're looking to get. Um, but rook c8, passive. And now the initiative should shift entirely to him. Now your force count is gone. And what's good about this, what's fun about this is, it's kind of like a King's Indian. For example, in a King's Indian, when the center is locked, you have an engine on the king's side and even when things go wrong, you have a chance to win the game or at least create enough counterplay. And that's the case here where you kind of cheap shotted him and the baguette missed it with queen a7 and you correctly said queen b3 and toast. Correct, correct. White has got too much. Okay, so queen a7, boom. White's lucky to have that. And um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly. It's hard to say exactly what's going on, but I would be very hopeful for black here. And you give a great variation. And one thing that you know I'll say is me and Kostya, uh, when we started the dojo, we did a lot of game review. And one thing that we noticed, and I'm just going to go ahead and guess that this happened here, is that when we got to end game positions, people weren't thinking long enough. And here, as you write in your notes, if you had thought a little longer, you would have found rook b2 with the point. Actually, let's show it. It's a very nice variation. a4, knight c2, and it's very hard because on rook a4, You've got rook here, boom, boom, and it's a very unpleasant situation for white. Again, so it's a counterattacking situation like the King's Indian, where even if you make a mistake, as you did, you still have incredible chances to win or get enough play to hold. Okay, so in the game, we had uh, rook c2, and then I guess it is over. That pawn is too powerful. And white plays a very nice rook a4 dominating the knight. I like it a lot. And now we're winning. Well played by the baguette at the end. Okay, so that is uh, the end. And I just want to stress that pawns are not people. And that's why the minority attack is the worst of the three plans in the position. f3 dominates the knight on f6 and looks to activate our rook on f1. f4 does similar, has similar notions. So that's why those plans, active plans with the pieces are better than the miserable common plan of a3, b4. All right, bye-bye.